Hey everybody, it's Katie Two here and today we're going to have a little tutorial on how I do my sketching, my line art, my coloring and my shading. It's going to be very quick and like only the basics, but I will be showing you how I do all of these things. Uh, the, I'm not claiming these as the only correct ways to do things, I'm just showing you how I personally do it and I hope this is helpful for you guys. So if you're ready, let's do this! For this step, I'm going to go with a watercolor brush, larger brush, just so I can have a little bit of um, a preview of what the pose is going to look like. So I'm going to do some really rough um, circles, like for the head, and then I'm going to just do something really quick here. So. I'm going to draw a really quick chibi body or something. So yeah, this is it for the first rough sketch. So sketching is really important that you put whatever you're thinking out there without worrying that what it's going to look like at first. So when I'm sketching, I really enjoy doing really, really rough lines, like thick lines, and then starting to refine it. So after I've done this really quick, Thing, I'm going to lower the opacity of the layer by dragging this bar here to a lower number. I'm going to just get a darker brush, still a watercolor, but just because that's my personal preference. And I'm going to use a smaller brush and I'm going to go over it, refining what the body looks like. So just so I can see a little bit better of the idea that I had before. You can see that now it looks a lot more refined. Then I'm going to use this circle shape that I made for the head as a reference to draw the actual head. Now I have a little chibi head. Okay, so this is a more refined sketch. Then I'm going to start adding the details and I'm going to draw some clothes here, for example. Just something real quick. Okay, so just some funny girl here with a messed up face. So, okay, this is my sketch, all right? I don't really enjoy making really, really detailed sketches. I like to do the details while I'm doing the line art, but I think it's also very important to let your sketch be organized enough so that you won't be lost when you're doing the line art. When you're not gonna be looking at your own drawing and being like, what did I mean by this, you know? So I find it really important that like erasing the, the lines that you're not going to be using when you're doing the line art. So for example, I drew her hair over her head, so I'm going to erase the parts of her head that will not be showing when I'm doing the line art. Like this. You see? And now I'm going to again lower the opacity. It's really important to lower the opacity of the sketch when you're doing the line art because if you have like a really really high opacity and you're doing the line art in black, you're going to start getting a little confused by the color. It's going to be a little bit too much. So lower the opacity in order that you can see the sketch still but you can pay enough attention to the line art. I usually use uh, the pen brush for the line art. You can just do it in your personal preference. I'm completely fine with that. But my preference is the pen. So I am going to do the line art quickly here. This is not the drawing I'm going to be using to explain coloring and shading, but I'm going to do the line art real quick here. Okay, now that I have finished her top, for example, I'm, I want to show you guys a little bit of how you can change the color of your line art. So there is something called locking your layer. Um, it is very common to see like different names for this in different softwares. In Midibang, you can do it by pressing this button here saying protect alpha. In other softwares, you can find names such as lock or preserve opacity. Here it's protect alpha. What protect alpha does is making it impossible for you to color outside 
the elements of that layer. So this layer has only these lines. I used it only for line art, which means that if I take another color, such as red, and I paint it over, the only things that will be painted are the elements of this, this layer, which are the lines. So if you don't like your drawing to be like fully black line art, after you're done with it, you can paint over the line art in order to make it a little bit more, I, th I think cohesive or more natural. I think the lines look more natural when they're not fully black. So what I usually go for when I'm painting the line art is I pick a color that is a lot darker than the color I use to paint the elements. So for example, I have this top right here. The red lines, they work well because they are dark enough to be visible, but colorful enough to make this drawing look very, very interesting and not super solid and stuff. You know how you can see the difference between fully black lines and the reddish lines. They look more soft on the eye. So as you can see, I'm using a different drawing for the second part of this video. I think it's important to have a more complex drawing so I can explain all of the elements I want to cover on this video. I'm just going to go through my sketching process really quickly. You can realize that I'm using the exact same process that I showed you on the beginning of this video. So really rough shapes, then refining the sketch and then the line art. So now what I'm going to do is creating a contrast layer. A contrast layer works being a slightly darker color, no not slightly darker, it's actually much darker. Anyway, I usually have it as a very dark color underneath my line art layer or folder. This dark color, it works as a contrast layer because it allows me to paint over uh, areas using a very light color and being able to see where I'm painting. So for example, if I'm going to color her skin without the contrast layer, I would, would not be able to see the areas that are not properly colored. So for example, if I'm going to paint it like this, how would I be able to see where I'm painting without the contrast layer. It's a lot more difficult. So this layer allows me to see exactly the areas that I have not painted using a light color in a more easier way. So my painting looks a little bit more organized and I don't leave any pixels out. So I think it's really important to always have a contrast layer, but you can always uh, hide it when you're coloring uh, dark parts of your drawing. So. Here, I don't really need a contrast layer, it's going to make things a little bit more difficult. So I'll just hide it and use a dark color to paint the dark areas. But for the light areas, I always have to be, have to have a contrast layer. Now that I'm done with explaining the contrast layer, I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of how I do the base colors in a quicker way. I usually just take a paint bucket and paint over the areas, which is why I always think it's really important to have your line art properly closed so that doing this is a lot easier. If your software does not allow you to just paint inside the lines like this, you can always use a selective, a selective tool like the, the wand. Select the areas. You can select more areas by pressing shift on your keyboard and just clicking again. And after you do that, you just take the pen tool and paint inside the area that you have selected. So now that I am done with the base colors, I'm going to explain a little bit of the basics of shading. So I'm going to start with the skin, which is my favorite part of shading. 
First of all, I would like to explain the difference between creating a clipping mask and locking your layer. So to lock your layer, you will have this little button here. It might be called different names depending on the software. I think in Paint Tools I, it's called Preserve Opacity. What it does is when you click it, you will see this little X here, it will not allow any lines you draw to go outside of this layer. So this is a skin layer. You will see that even when I try to put my lines outside the skin layer, it will not happen. Everything I draw will only happen inside of the skin layer. So this may seem really useful for shading, but what I don't like about it is that when I make a mistake, for example, in my shading, and I want to erase it, it will erase everything, not only the shading. What I can do to avoid this is creating a clipping mask. I can create a clipping mask by making a new layer over the skin layer and clicking on this button, clipping. You will see that this layer seems to be bound to the layer below. That means exactly the same thing as locking. When, when I draw something, it will not go outside the skin layer. But this is a separate layer now, so I can erase my mistakes here and the layer below will not be compromised. So I think this is a more safe option for when you're drawing and when you're shading because when you make a mistake, you will not compromise the original layer. Keep in mind I'm using Metabank Paint, so your softwares may have slightly different names but it doesn't vary too much between clipping or creating a, cl a clipping mask, okay? So it's pretty easy to find. Now I'm going to talk a little bit of how you choose your colors for shading. So this is a very beginning mistake, I think, which is creating a new layer and putting it on multiply mode and using the same color as the base, but on multiply mode. What multiply mode does is when you color, it kind of adds the color you're using to the color below. So it gets slightly darker. So for example, with the clothing layer, when I make a new layer and put it on multiply mode, I'm going to use the base color to color, but you will see it will look slightly darker. It's like two base colors added together, so they look darker. This might work in certain occasions, but it's not always the best option. Why? Because for example, for the skin layer, you will notice that it's barely visible when I paint on multiply mode. It's a little bit too light because the base color is already very, very light. So it might work in some occasions, but it's not good to learn to shade using only multiply mode because it will not work in every single occasion. What might happen also is when you're using a really dark base color. So for example, for her hair, if I put it on multiply mode, you will see that the shading looks a little bit too dark. So it's really important to know how to work your colors without having to rely on multiply mode all the time. So now that we've made it clear that using multiply mode is not exactly the best option for shading, you may ask me, Katie, what's, how do you choose a color for shading then? Well, I think it's always really important to think about what kind of vibe you want to have with your drawing. So for example, if I'm using a really warm color palette, I may, for example, mix a little bit of pink inside of my drawing. So this little bar here shows lots of tones you can have for your drawing. So for example, if you start around here, you will see that the tones here in the middle they are a little bit colder. The tones here in the edges are a little bit warmer. So using this may help you find a tone for your drawing. So for example, if I'm going to color the skin and I'm going with a warmer color palette, I am going to grab this little bar here, approach it a little bit to the edge and choose a color that is a little bit warmer. So you will see this looks warm and soft. 
If I'm going with a colder color palette, I'm going to put it near here, the middle, and I'm going to choose a cooler color. And you will see, it, all of them look very good. It's not something that, oh, only one color will look good. There's something I can also I also really enjoy doing, which is I put the first shading closer to the original base color. So I'm using the exact same palette here. And then when I'm going to do the second part of the shading, I put a really more saturated color, which I think has a really interesting effect. Now you may ask me, what is this thing you just mentioned? Like first part of the shading, second part of the shading, what, what is this? What does that mean? Well, I think when you're trying to make your drawing a little bit more, like have more dimension, it's really cool not to have just one part of the shading. So I'm not just gonna use one color, I'm going to shade here and here and under her neck and that's all, you know? I'm going to get give it a little bit more depth than that. So something I really enjoy doing is this time I'm going to use uh, the preserve opacity slash protect alpha option for this layer. I'm going to pick a darker color and a little bit more saturated but that's just my personal choice and I'm going to shade inside the shading so that it will have darker areas inside the already dark area. So if she has shadows all under her neck, but it's even darker here where her hair is making a shadow, I'm going to add a little bit more shadow. So I think this really helps the drawing get a little bit more depth and make it a lot more interesting. I'm going to finish shading her face in this technique just so you guys can see what I'm talking about when I get to my next part of the shading. So, okay, let's see, let's say this is how it's going to, to be with the first shading and now with the second shading, just for example purposes. Okay, so this is what she's going to look like. Something that I really enjoy doing, just, um, just to make the drawing a little bit softer is I will use this tool to copy the base layer. The shading layer is already locked using Protect Alpha, which means every single thing I do in this layer is only going to happen inside this layer. It's not going to, to happen on the base layer. What I'm going to do using the base color is picking an airbrush. An airbrush is a really, really soft brush. You will see that it's not as sharp as the pen brush, for example. So I'm going to use the airbrush layer to make the edges of my shading very soft. So the layer is locked here. I'm going to use airbrush to soften the edges of my shading. Do you see how this really makes the shading look very natural? Compared to what it was before, all of the edges are a lot more natural than they used to be. And I don't do that for every single edge, not, not even for every single drawing, but I think it's really nice to have this option. The last thing I do to make my shading of have a lot of depth is I create a new layer, I put it on a clipping mask, which means it's still bound to the base layer. Both of these layers have clipping masks to the same layer. Every time you create a layer over the base layer, and put it on clipping mask by pressing this little button here, it will be bound to this layer, all right? So the last thing I do is creating this new layer, putting it on clipping mask, and using the blending mode to put it on multiply mode. Yes, I use multiply mode even though I didn't, I said it was not the best option all of the time, what I'm, going, what I'm going to do right now is using airbrush to give it even more depth in a very soft way. I use it in a very big size and I'm going to shade 
over certain areas of her face so that she will have a few soft shadows as well. Putting it on multiply mode means that it will not be overshadowing the layer below. If I put it on normal mode, you will see what will happen. Do you see that the layer below is pretty much gone? Because the light that I used here is a lighter color than the, the color below. It is all over it. So if I put it on multiply mode, they're going to add each other in a way that the layer below will look a little bit darker and this layer will not overshadow it. So this is basically the process that I use for every single part of my drawing. The process is base color, the first part of the shading plus the second part of the shading, picking the base color using an airbrush and softening the edges and then adding a second layer on multiply mode and adding a soft shading. So something that in general is really important that you have when you're drawing is a little bit of knowing where your light is coming from. So for example, if, I don't know, the sun is on this side, the light will be coming from here, all right? The light coming from here means that the, the parts of her skin that are hidden from this little sun here are going to be with some shadows. So for example, her hair here is probably hiding a little bit of her face. So I'm going to have shadows here. If the sun is on this side, this little strand of hair is going to have a shadow from this side. You know, it's all in the little details, but having a specific light source will help you shading your drawing and in the end it will look a little more cohesive. It will look more cohesive when you have a specific light source. The easiest light source you can possibly have for your drawing is if the sun is staring directly at her, which means that all of the shadows will be directly under the elements. So if the sun is staring right at her, the shadows will be kind of like symmetrical, you know? You're just going to have shadows under things and it's not going to be very, you know, just shadows under things a little bit more symmetrical. So having the sun staring directly at her is really the easiest light source. But as you get more comfortable with it, you can play with many, many light sources. It's really interesting to learn how to work them. So this is basically what I do when I'm coloring and shading. There is only one last thing I would like to talk about, which is how do I shade when I have a layer with multiple colors? That might happen here, for example where there are multiple colors. Well, this is the case where I personally use the multiply mode, <laughs> yay! So the multiply mode will make a lot of sense when you use it to shade something that has lots of colors in it. It might be gradient, it might be a pattern such as this one, because when you put this layer on multiply mode, you will see that the color will distribute evenly between the two tones. So yeah, this is my last tip. And if you want a little bit more specific tips on how to color hair and eyes, I also have two videos on it that I will be linking. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video. Bye!